Hi, my name is Angela Hubbard and I'm a student at North State Community College. I'm actually a history major um, and I'm very excited to work on this project about the uh, Tennessee history. Um, right now I'm getting ready to visit with uh, Dr. Phil Mummert. Um, he worked at the Tennessee Valley Authority for 26 years from 1980 all the way to 2006. He is a former professor at Graduate School of Planning at what is today the University of Memphis. He also previously worked with the West Michigan Shoreline Regional Development Commission in Muskegon, Michigan, and the National Association of Countless in Washington, counties, I'm sorry, in Washington, um, DC. He holds a BS in sociology from the Pennsylvania State University and MS and PhD degrees in urban and regional planning from the University of Wisconsin. Um, thank you so much for being with us today, Dr. Mummer. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Thanks, Angela. You are welcome. Um, to begin with, what is the Tennessee Valley, Valley Authority or the TVA, rather? Uh, the Tennessee Valley Authority is an organization uh, that was created uh, by Congress and uh, the President Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1933. Uh, it's uh, an independent federal corporation. And what that means, it's, it's not a part of the executive branch. It's not part of any like cabinet. It's independent, uh, somewhat like the uh, post US Postal Service is, as, as well as Amtrak that runs a passenger railroad. Uh, it was created to brought, provide a uh, a particular service like the post office mm -hmm. as well as the uh, Am Amtrak, uh, but it's unique in quite a number of ways. Number one, uh, it was created to focus on a particular region of the country and it doesn't uh, do anything that's national in scope. And number two, it has a really broad mission uh, unlike the post office, for instance, which has to deliver mail, uh, the mission that's created or uh, described in the Tennessee Valley Act that created it uh, is quite broad. Uh, it says that uh, it's going to be an agency that's uh, responsible for planning the proper use, conservation, and development of the natural resources of the Tennessee River drainage basin and it's adjoining territory and providing for the general welfare of its citizens. How in the world is an agency going to do all of that? <laughs> that's, a, that's a large bill. There's, there's nothing in the TBA Act that describes just how they're going to do that. So it's gotten really broad authority to do, it sounds like, just about anything it wants to. <laughs> Very rare in the federal government to have an organization that has that kind of broad authority. And the third unique thing is that it is headquartered in the region. It's not in Washington, DC. Uh, the headquarters in, for the TVA were supposed to be in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, where, t where the federal government had some facilities on the Tennessee River. But the original uh, members of the board, I think liked uh, East Tennessee a little bit better they wanted to be near a university library. And the only library in the Tennessee Valley in 1933 was in Knoxville at the University of Tennessee. Amazing. So the first project TVA had was Norris Dam, which was not too far from Knoxville. So that Knoxville became the headquarters of, uh, of TVA. Um, I'd like to add one nice quote that uh, indicates uh, what Franklin Delano Roosevelt wanted this agency to be. And this doesn't give us any more information about how specific it should be, but he says he wanted a corporation that was clothed with the power of government, but possessed with the flexibility and initiative of private enterprise. So once again, 
it could maybe do just about anything it wanted to, as long as it was helping the people of the Tennessee Valley. Do you have any question on that? That's definitely what it sounds like. I wanted to say that in the act, it does say that there's certain things that it could, should be doing or working on. One was to improve navigation and flood control on the Tennessee River, uh, provide for reforestation, and also provide for agricultural and industrial development. Mm. That's about well, as specific as it gets. I know we definitely had some issues in this area with flood control, um, you know. Um, now, in what ways do you feel that the TVA has impacted Tennessee overall? Um, can you give us some examples? I sure can. I'm, I'm wondering, uh, <clears throat> before I, <clears throat> excuse me, before I answer you, <clears throat> before I answer you, um, I think it's good to uh, describe a little bit about the what the conditions were in 1933 in the Tennessee Valley. Mm -hmm. um, and you're in uh, Upper East Tennessee. Uh, I wonder if you could uh, create a mental picture of uh, a map, I guess, with Tennessee, the state of Tennessee in the middle. And on the right hand side of the map, uh, there's Upper East Tennessee, and it's surrounded on the north by the state of Virginia, and on the east by North Carolina, mm -hmm. and kind of on the south by Georgia. <clears throat> and that whole area, as you know, is quite mountainous. It includes the Blue Ridge and the Unica Mountains and the Smokies. Yep. And it gets a lot of rain, especially in the wintertime and the spring. From that whole mountainous area, the rivers flow out of Virginia. There's three of them in part primarily, Clinch, the Pow, and the Holston. Mm -hmm. They flow in a southwesterly direction. Coming out of North Carolina in the Asheville area, there's the French Broad River, the big watershed. Mm -hmm. And coming out of Georgia, uh, there's the Little Tennessee River, and there's also the Hawassi River. All of these rivers very generally flow toward kind of in the south, south, southwest, and they enter the Tennessee River around Knoxville or a little bit south of Knoxville. They're like a big funnel. Mm -hmm. This water comes from all over. And they come to the French Broad and the Holston River comes together right at Knoxville, Tennessee. And that's where the Tennessee River begins. And from that point, the Tennessee River flows another 650 miles. Wow. Flows from down to where Chattanooga is. And just about when it gets to Chattanooga, it turns right and flows through the Cumberland Plateau through what's known as the Grand Canyon of Tennessee, about 30 miles, the Tennessee Gorge. And then it goes into Alabama and it crosses the northern part of Alabama. It gets to where Mississippi is and it turns right goes back into Tennessee and crosses the whole state of Tennessee, north and south, and goes into Kentucky and discharges into the Ohio River. Oh, wow. But uh, at Chattanooga, Chattanooga is uh, one of the larger cities in the Tennessee Valley, and it is just east of the Tennessee Gorge. The Tennessee Gorge is, is where the river narrows, and it's the Cumberland Plateau. In those times when we have a lot of rain 
in all other parts of the upper mountainous area of, the, of Tennessee. And all that rip water gathers and comes down through Knoxville and goes another 150 miles to Chattanooga. The gorge acts as a partial dam. Mm -hmm. Chattanooga is really uh, prone to flooding. And it had some serious floods back in the 1800s and the early 1900s. You may have seen pictures of that. Yeah. And uh, also in Northern Alabama, there's a stretch of the river 40 miles long called the Shoals. Mm -hmm. It was impassable many times of the year. It had big rocks, white water. It's where the, the river descended about 150 feet in just those 40 miles. Wow. Steamboats couldn't make it up the river. And the old settlers that went down in flatboats had trouble getting over it, but they could go down river, but they had trouble getting up river. Never tried it, frankly. Yeah. So anyway, that's one of the, the situations we have. And in 1933, in, the, in Tennessee Valley generally, and in Tennessee, about there were so many farm families, and they were couldn't make it. It was after the or in the depression, number one, mm -hmm. but the soil conditions were very poor. Uh, the rain was washing out the nutrients from the soil. Tennessee was not green and forested as much as, as it is today. Yeah. So it was really poor conditions. A lot of the people were illiterate and very poor and didn't uh, practice a good farming practice either. And so when it rained, it just washed more, you know, soil away. And this happened a lot up where you are in East Tennessee and the Southwest Virginia, Western North Carolina and Northern Georgia. Yes. A very, very difficult situation. So with all these problems, one of the things that FDR wanted was the TVA to do something about these problems and not just one of them, but all these three or four big problems. Mm -hmm. So um, knowing that, uh, they developed a major comprehensive plan that involved building a system of dams on the river. And those dams were multi-purpose dams. They were to hold, create flood storage waters, mm -hmm. be able to control floods and uh, help protect Chattanooga and other areas. They were to provide uh, enough flow on the river to be able to control the flow of the water. So there was a navigation channel on that 650 mile stretch from Knoxville to Paducah, Kentucky so that there wouldn't be any problems getting through the gorge as well as they could get and navigate across Northern Alabama. Um, in addition, uh, they had a, uh, an effort to improve farming and uh, the forests. So with that background, <laughs> I'm gonna start answering your question. <laughs> Uh, That's a lot of water moving in a lot of places. Isn't that it? is. But anyway, what TVA, uh, the, the question you asked was what impact did it have on, T on Tennessee? And it had quite a significant impact. It still does in quite a number of ways. And I don't know if you don't mind, I'm just going to go down a list of about 10 ways that it's impacted Tennessee. Absolutely. Uh, and then this is no set order, but Number one, it's transformed the landscape of Tennessee near the major rivers. TVA built 19 high hydroelectric dams. And they also, in addition to that, built nine small dams. So there's a total of almost 30 dams in the state of Tennessee that TVA built. And they're, they, by building these dams, they created these big reservoirs of water. And, you live near one of them, was Wat Wataga. Wataga, yep. Yeah. But in doing that, uh, uh, they created these huge lakes. They, they aren't little ponds, as you know. They're yep. Uh, in fact, Kentucky Lake, 
which is the last one on the Tennessee River is a hundred over a hundred miles long. Wow. It's almost a mile and a half wide at that point. But uh, the, uh, as you also know, uh, when they built the dams, in some cases, they put uh, a lot of good farmland underwater. And sometimes they put small towns underwater, such as mm -hmm. Butler. Absolutely, yeah, Butler. 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 Yep. So it wasn't all rosy, but uh, it was to create you know, a system of dams. And so that one thing it did was transform the landscape of Tennessee in these areas near the river. Now, a second impact TVA has had on Tennessee is, is it's avoided the damages from flooding. Each year, uh, it uh, avoids almost $300 million worth of flood damage. Mm -hmm. This is around Chattanooga. Uh, and since TVA was created, it's prevented over about $9 billion worth of flood loss at Chattanooga. Uh, another uh, impact on the state of Tennessee is that TVA has enabled navigation on the Tennessee, Tennessee River up to Tennessee, Upper Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Today, over 25,000 barges make those trips or use the Tennessee River, and they carry 40, 40 to 50 million tons of goods, and they save hundreds of millions of dollars in transportation costs because wow. on the water is much cheaper than trucks and rail. Diesel fuel, yeah. So another impact is uh, TVA helped the farmers become more productive. They uh, developed an agriculture development program and gave fertilizers back in the 1930s and uh, did a lot of work along that line. But uh, they created a concept of, of uh, demonstration farms. Mm -hmm which were so successful that uh, ag extension at the universities pretty much used it as a model in later years. Wow. It was a way to show farmers how production could be improved and they'd show how things could be improved on certain farms and then they'd invite the farmer's neighbors over to see what's happened. Oh, and wow. The ideas spread like wildfire. So like that's a big farming party, that's pretty neat. Nice. Another impact. They've, they improved the forests. PVA, when it was created, started a big forest program. They inventoried the forest. They started a couple of nurseries that TVA ran. They produced seedlings. They taught people how to do sustainable forest management. In the first 10 years of TVA's existence, 130 million trees were planted on 90,000 acres. Most of the, many of these were in Southwest Virginia and East Tennessee. By 1942, TVA staff didn't do that. They worked a lot with the, the uh, Civilian Conservation Corps that planted those trees. Uh, another uh, impact on Tennessee, and this is the one we're most familiar with today, but it produced and distributed electricity. And as it grew, it became the main power provider for all of the state of Tennessee. And is it's the largest power provider, public utility that provides electricity in the nation today. Wow. Uh, another impact, it can manage the water flow in the whole Tennessee River system and its tributaries for multiple purposes. That means that the flow of water that comes out of Watauga Dam and all the other dams, it's all managed on an integrated basis for the whole system. And so they do it for navigation and for flood damage reduction and power production, but they also manage the water for aquatic ecology, for water supply for some of the cities and communities downstream, for mosquito control in Alabama, and for different recreational events. Uh, you may know that, for instance, on the Ocoee River, uh, the whitewater events for the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta were held there, and TVA provided mm -hmm. perfect conditions 
because it has dams in those rivers and uh, white water, white water uh, athletes from around the world still come back to the Ekoe to train. Uh, on uh, Melton Hill Reservoir near Oak Ridge, that's a national rowing course, which TVA manages, um, and uh, all the rowing team, collegiate rowing teams from east of the Mississippi gather there in springtime for competition and for training. And then you know about fishing tournaments as well. Yep. So special events that can be uh, held. Uh, another impact on the state of Tennessee is industrial and economic development. TVA has been very involved, especially since the 1950s in helping the state recruit industry, do site planning, industrial park planning along the river. And uh, they have been involved in all sorts of different economic development activities I won't get into. Another impact is recreation. Yeah. All the state, county, municipal parks that are on any major river in Tennessee uh, was on Tennessee TVA land and was transferred to the city, county, or state uh, for park. And it's likely that some TVA people were involved in planning those parks along with the state as well. Uh, there are also uh, public access areas, the rivers for fishing. Mm -hmm. Those in Upper East Tennessee or Southwest Virginia, they're, they may be, uh, say they're managed by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency or the Virginia Fish and Game Commission, but they were provided by TVA and TVA still owns those ramps. Wow, okay. Uh, another thing that TVA br brought in its Excuse me. Is that it brought the, the ethic of public power, which is very important. Uh, TVA obviously is part of government, but it distributes its electricity through 150 different distributors, municipal electric distributors or rural electric co-ops. And these organizations exist to provide power, not for a profit, but to serve the public and to provide it reliably. And so they have an investment and an interest in the local community. We have last, last saw the horrible uh, situation in Texas. Yes. Oh. The cold weather. There they do have public power. They have power provided for profit by commercial mm -hmm. organizations. It makes a big difference. Um, and let me say that other impacts, of course, of TVA, uh, TVA provides employment. It empl employs tens of thousands of people at different times in its history. And it has also, uh, it's required in the TVA Act that it makes in lieu of tax payments. I don't know if you knew anything about this. Mm -mm. Uh, every year. There's all kinds of things right now. Every year, TVA, because in part, uh, it is a federal agency and it's tax exempt. It's in the act that TVA has to pay the states in which it has properties and where it makes money to provide to, to produce power. It needs to pay annually uh, amount of, amounts of money uh, that, are, that are called in lieu of tax payments. Uh, this year or last year, TVA paid about 500 to $600 million. Oh For the state of Tennessee, the state of Tennessee last year got around 340 to $370 million. And what the, the, the state keeps half of that. And the other half, the state of Tennessee splits up and it gets, goes to, is allocated to all the counties and all the cities. Oh, so, wow. So Kingsport, Sullivan County, everybody gets some TVA in lieu of tax payment every year since 1933. So uh, basically, those are the impacts. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Like I said, I'm learning a lot. I mean, everybody, we take for granted the TVA, you know, growing up around here and living here, but to dig in and hear exactly what they're all about is very exciting. Um, oh, and, and, and TVA. 
And t the TVA, uh, I didn't mention, but the Tennessee Valley watershed, the river basin, is mm -hmm. 1,000 square miles. It's oh, man. really difficult for any human being, you know, uh, to get uh, a sense of the scale of this operation. Oh, yeah. And it amazes me being across from a river and in this area, just how this river runs into that river. And so my mind can't comprehend, you know, the metrics you're talking about. I well, and and the ocean I, me. Having, work, having worked at TVA, it's difficult to comprehend. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> how do you feel that your work um, with the TVA has impacted Tennessee and its communities? Well, my, my work is, we haven't talked about, it's quite, was quite different. Uh, TVA uh, through the years has done a lot of different things uh, as, it, as it evolved. Um, but my work at TVA uh, starting in 1980, uh, I worked a lot in the regional waste. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Tennessee and the Tennessee communities were having a lot of uh, need for improvement in how they handled the waste, in particular solid waste, garbage. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, for about uh, 10 years, kind of managed a group of people that were experts and engineers and and worked in all kinds of areas of, of waste management. But we didn't really deal with TVA's waste. We, it was primarily to assist communities, small, small mm -hmm. counties or rural counties. And um, we worked a lot of, with a lot of counties uh, all over the state. But we also we worked, included a lot of, of them in, in Upper East Tennessee. I'm just gonna give you a quick thumbnail sketch, but we worked on improving methods for rural uh, solid waste collection. Um, garbage in the areas in Upper East Tennessee, places like Upper East Tennessee was, were put in a, pretty much a hole in the ground, the old mm -hmm. camp, uh, or people would dump things along the roadside or they would burn stuff in their backyard. Yeah. And in many places, and you may remember or know, there were green boxes that were put out sometimes that the counties would service and people could take their garbage and put them in these green boxes along an old country road. But those were poorly managed that created a mess. I uh, bet. They were a public health nuisance. Uh, so in those days, people would drive across uh, the state line, maybe from North Carolina and dump hazardous wastes in and then let the, the Tennessee County uh, clean it up. Deal with it. Mm. So uh, there was quite some issues and the, the county uh, officials asked uh, for assistance from TVA and TVA spoke, uh, this was the only ent entity I think in the country that was doing this at that time. That is thinking about how rural waste could be collected. Most of it was being collected well in cities, but uh, when it went out in rural areas, it was a different situation. Uh, so anyway, uh, we developed in ways to, to get around that. And uh, you may know about convenience centers where people can take their waste now and drop it off their little mm -hmm. fence areas. Uh, TVA designed and created that concept. Uh, we helped start the first rural recycling program in the country, which was a demonstration project in Granger County. Oh, wow. Uh, a lot of people back in the 1980s, not much was being recycled except aluminum cans and, and maybe cardboard. Mm -hmm. But um, most people thought that people that lived in farms and rural areas either wouldn't spend the time to recycle or they wouldn't care about it or that uh, the rural areas were too far away from the cities and so it cost too much to collect and transport the recyclables. There's, there were a whole lot of problems. Anyway, we proved them wrong in Granger County. Awesome. <laughs> we, we like to do at TVA and we did that in a number of other places in the Tennessee Valley. TVA helped uh, uh, counties uh, 
developed their first landfills. Their oh, wow, okay. Fills. They did that in many counties in, in, in Tennessee, got TVA's assistance for that. And the people that did it were some of the people I helped uh, that worked with me. I managed. Uh, TVA uh, had some, a demonstration project or two in, in energy from waste uh, at Gallatin, Tennessee was one of the main places where they were burning garbage to convert it into uh, steam. Mm -hmm. uh, the TVA also had a lot of people working in agronomy and farming in, at their facilities in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and they worked on helping uh, cities deal with uh, their sewage sludge. Sl oh, wow. Sewage sludge is the solids that come from the sewage treatment process. But instead of taking it to the landfill, TVA wanted to help those city some cities understand that it was valuable fertilizer if it was handled properly and if it was uh, applied properly on the land. And TVA had about six or seven demonstration uh, cities where uh, they were, uh, you know, encouraging this and it, where actually it was done and it still is done. Asheville, North Carolina was one of those cities and mm -hmm. the, the, the farms at Warren Wilson College still use the, the sewage sludge for their, their gardens. Well, I'm glad it's got its uses, you know, I mean, everything <laughs> does. <laughs> but anyway, um, I worked for in that, that field and, and, uh, was really interested in it and did, we did a lot of work all over the Tennessee Valley dealing with different kinds of waste problems that were faced by the communities. But the main one was collection and coming up with some solutions for that. Now, uh, later on in my career, if I had a fun one year when I was uh, supposed to be in charge of starting and encouraging what TVA to encourage cleanups around uh, the valley. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to work with volunteer groups at the local level that would wanted to go out and pick up litter and things and debris around the TVA reservoirs. I think that you have some that go on in at South Holston and Watago. Well, we yep. start, well, yours truly helped start those. Back That's in awesome. I've did and, that before. I've went and helped. Uh, it was a lot. Yeah, TVA gives the bags. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They partner, but it's. Not just a TVA event, a lot of people come out from different organizations and citizens, and that's great. But that happens all up and down the Tennessee Valley today. Mm -hmm. And one other thing I worked on uh, was water loss leak detection. One of the problems uh, uh, we had and, and may still have uh, has to do with uh, water loss in municipal and uh, water utility drinking water systems. Mm -hmm. After water is treated, a lot of it can be leak, can leak out. And basically that's a waste because uh, it's a waste of energy, it's a waste of money and- <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, yes. A lot of the uh, water systems were having problems like that. And uh, it's kind of a continuing problem to find where the leaks were uh, you either had to dig up the whole line oh my. and a lot of time, or you could have a better way. And TVA uh, had a, what was called a sonic leak detector, which uh, was a particular kind of uh, technology. It's really common now, but in, it was something special in the 1980s. And TVA uh, loaned this piece of equipment and trained the public works people in mm -hmm. the communities how to use it. And so they could go out and actually find where the leaks were uh, using this piece of equipment. And then uh, they could repair the leak uh, much more readily. That had to save a lot of money then. That saved a lot of money. And there were just hundreds upon hundreds of uh, cities and, and water districts that used that. And I can, I can name a whole bunch. There were, uh, there were about, uh, uh, 60, just in Upper East Tennessee and Southwest. Oh, wow. About every town from Bristol, Kingsport to Pennington Gap, Virginia to uh, 
Bluff City, I can name them all. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you think about it, everybody has a leak every now and then. So that definitely had to, you know, tamp that down uh, yeah. and save money in those areas. Now, TVA generally worked this way. They would get something started. They'd be a catalyst. They'd do something like this for maybe five, six years, just so people began to do it. But TVA doesn't do that anymore. Right. So these water systems have, you know, they either probably purchased this, uh, this equipment and, and have it available themselves today, or they maybe hire a consultant, whatever. Yeah, but you were the big problem solver back then, though. That had really? to be done. I mean, you know, you would have to really have patience and enjoy what you did to be able to dig in and, and find something like that. Yeah, and, and once again, I, I'm not the person that did that, but I managed the people that did. They were, yes. they were water they were water system experts, and so they knew what they were talking about, and they could communicate with the, the people at the uh, local level. Awesome, awesome. That's a really uh, long way to ask answer that question. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm loving it. It's great information. Um, by your estimation, what are some of the things TVA has done, both past and present, that people may not know or recognize? Um, which I feel like you've went over quite a bit. Um, is there anything that comes to mind that's totally out of character that would surprise us all? I've got more of it for you, Angela. Okay, I'm loving it. Do <laughs> um, you know about fertilizer development? Mm -hmm. I mean, the TVA uh, manufactured, developed. Oh, wow. Fertilizer. I did not know that. That was one of its national missions. Uh, wow. I told you earlier that TVA just was it created for the region, and it was, mm -hmm. but... Uh, at Muscle Shoals, Alabama, there was an old munitions plant that the federal government had. And when TVA came, came into its existence, it was told that it had to convert those facilities into for fertilizer development, which, which can be done. Excuse me. Kind of uh, swords into plowshares type of thing. Oh, wow. And, uh, and the fertilizer was to be used to help the farmers. Mm hmm become more productive. So TVA began to develop chemical fertilizers. This is a long story, uh, Angela, but basically they became extremely useful. They became extremely popular. And TVA ended up uh, having a field staff across the nation in the different uh, land grant universities, ag schools. And uh, they, uh, not only in the Tennessee Valley, but across you know, the nation, they mm -hmm. would teach about how to use chemical fertilizers. Uh, so they basically saved this whole area between the dams and the fertilizer with the farmers. You know? Exactly. Wow. That that was, and that was a part of the original TVA, you know, plan that came up in the 1930s was to work with the farmers on things like, like this. Mm -hmm. It became then popular internationally. The, the U.S. State Department uh, contracted with TVA to create an international fertilizer development center. Wow. That still exists at Muscle Shoals, and they have programs around the world. They work with about 100 different countries. TVA. Come on, that's probably a lot of jobs for a lot of people, too. Yeah. Just program. TVA doesn't do that anymore, but okay. this national fertilizer center still exists, and it's not associated with TVA, but it is at Muscle Shoals. And, uh, but yeah, fertilizer development. Now, uh, we could have a long conversation about the value of chemical fertilizers and some of their environmental problems, but um, I was told by someone who knows just the last week or so that was involved in this program that it's still true that TVA developed about 70% of the chemical fertilizers that are used today in the world. That's amazing. What the way it, they, they transfer the patents yeah. to the fertilizer industry, small and large firms that, but they were developed by TVA mm. over the, you know, the, over the years. Yeah. Uh, another thing uh, to answer your question, some things that TVA did that you may not know about. Um, I think this is interesting. Um, TVA 
had a transportation rate analysis group. They had one because they used it primarily to, to uh, keep up with uh, rates for river navigation and mm -hmm. different things on the river and promoting the river for navigation. But uh, one of the, uh, there, there's a, a Staley uh, uh, Corporation is a, one of the big uh, industries that came to Tennessee about in the early 80s. It's in Loudoun, Tennessee, and it's a corn refining plant. They make a lot of corn fructose that goes in your carbonated drinks and yep. syrup and all that kind of thing. Obviously, their raw material comes from the Midwest and Illinois and Iowa and places like that. And that's where the Staley Company was headquartered. Mm -hmm. But their market in the 1980s, they was in the Southeast for these. So uh, uh, it was the transportation rate analysis people. They knew that Staley was looking for a location for this corn refining plant. And the tendency would have been in 1980 for them to locate somewhere in Illinois or Iowa near where their product was. Right. The TVA transportation rate people uh, worked with this Tennessee economic development people and showed Staley the economic benefits of bringing their grain on the Tennessee River. And wow. so their production facility could be nearer their market. Right. So they did that and they uh, located uh, their plant. It still operates. It's in, uh, in Loudoun. Wow. And another story that's similar, uh, you know, Nissan was the first uh, Japanese or foreign owned vehicle manufacturing assembly plant in North America. Yeah. And it ended up being in Smyrna, Tennessee. I think they employ about 7,000 people now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's They've big. had about four or five expansions. But um, back in 1982 or 83, um, when Nissan was looking for a location in North America, the, the world of, of industrial attracting industry is extremely competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very difficult. And TVA people were involved, always trying to work with the state to attract industries. And any big industry takes into consideration, you know, there may be 30 or 40 factors about yeah, final selection. And they go through a process and they finally get down to say two or three sites. And that's where we they got. And one was in Tennessee. And the TVA person that was an economic transportation analysis got the word to the head, the Tennessee Economic Development Commissioner. They said, you know, if we could find out where all the different parts that Nissan, you know needs mm -hmm. these vehicles together are anywhere in the world and where they want to market their product, we could do a transportation analysis for you and wow. show them options. Well, they went, TVA went out to Los Angeles where Nissan was headquartered in North America and Nissan agreed to give all their information. There are a lot- That's more awesome. Parts were coming from Japan, some from Mexico, and all, all the places. And what uh, they did was do a transportation analysis, and they showed the value of a lot of things being uh, carried on the river. Yeah, yeah. And then Nissan selected Smyrna. Now, we don't know why they selected Smyrna, but uh, <laughs> the, uh, my friend of mine that was involved with this told me that on the big day that they had the big announcement that Nissan was coming, Lamar Alexander was governor at the time and everyone, mm -hmm. all the elected officials were getting credit. The commissioner of economic development whispered in the TVA guy's ear, he said, you know, I don't think this plant would have come here if it weren't for your transportation analysis. The Japanese were extremely impressed with that. That's amazing. Who knows? And we would it, never think of something like with, that. With what's yeah. happened with the automobile industry in the Southeast uh, now, you know. That, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely moved around. 
what are some things, other things you might not know about? Well, TVA um, recreation planners planned a lot of parks for, yeah. for towns and cities all over. I can't. I, mean, I don't think we give them credit. I think we look for the local where it's a lot broader spectrum. You know, um, <laughs> I would never imagine. Oh, the TVA helped plan this park in our town. I wouldn't even think to go there. So that that's awesome to know. Well, see, that. TV, and TVA did never always worked with some partner and some local. Mm -hmm. And the TVA pretty much worked under the radar in a way. Right. They would maybe d plan the park, but. There's not a sign there that says it's a TVA park because the deal was TVA said, okay, city of Bluff City or whoever it would right. be. This is your park. You're gonna maintain it and you know, and we're we're leaving town. <laughs> that's that's awesome though. That's the way TVA operated. Uh TVA started a number of uh volunteer fire companies where wow. um, rural areas like Hancock County and Hawkins mm -hmm. County. They didn't have any fire protection back in the seven, 1970s. Uh, they did, TVA did flood insurance studies for most of the cities and counties in the Tennessee Valley. Uh, the uh, coal mine reclamation, TVA did the first coal mine reclamation up in Southwest Virginia uh, and led to being, creating the national standard for coal mine reclamation uh, that was built into the Surface Mining Act. Uh, wow. But uh, the uh, problems that were created by disturbed land from coal without any, you know, regulation was a mm -hmm. problem. And TVA got involved because it was buying coal mm -hmm. from places. And at some point in the 1970s, I believe it was, the TVA board decided anyone that we're buying coal from is going to have to ha reclaim their uh, their mine site and that which meant that TVA had to have some experts so they transferred some people that were in forestry and to learn about mine reclamation coal mine yeah but and some of the first coal mine reclamation projects were up in uh, southwest uh, Virginia mm -hmm. uh, Wise and uh, Big Stone Gap area um, the uh, TVA did industrial park siting and design for hundreds of communities. Uh, there were about 40 that were done in, in Tennessee by the year 1980. Oh, wow. The, uh, oh, uh, Kingsport Industrial Park and Piney Flats were two, mm -hmm. I know of, that were designed uh -huh. by TVA. Uh, did you know that uh, TVA uh, today uh, does not receive a dime from the federal government. Oh, my. No, I did not know and that. And on top of that, since 1959 and up until about five or six years ago, it paid back to the U.S. Treasury uh, the amount of money plus interest for the investment in all the dams. That's it's amazing. The only federal agency that's ever done that. That is amazing. It's Treasury back. That's awesome. TVA today is completely self-supported by the revenues that come through from the sale of uh, power. Electricity. That's awesome. There's a few things you might not know about. No, that's a lot <laughs> I didn't know. And I, that's that's just blows my mind. Um, how has TVA positively affected Tennessee's smaller communities in rural areas? Um, such as where, you know, where we are, the Upper East Tennessee and Southwest Virginia regions. Um, I know you've kind of hit and missed on this as we went along. Is there really anything else that comes to mind that they've specifically um, helped us in this area to benefit? Uh, yes. And I'll go down uh, a few of things here. There were a couple of small dams built. Um, you may know where they are. Uh, this is not in Tennessee, but it's so close, I've got to say. This is mm -hmm. up off of um, Exit 7 on Interstate 81. Uh, Beaver Creek Dam yep. and Clear Creek Dam. Yep. You know, have you been to Beaver Creek? 
I've been through there. I've not been there, but I, I know the area that you're Well, it's the Sugar, Sugar Hollow Park. It's mm -hmm. about a thousand acre park, but that's TVA land. It still is today. But the park was helped, helped des designed partly by TVA. And uh, also uh, Clear Creek Dam has a golf course. Oh, wow. And uh, that's the finest public golf course, I, I'm told, in the Bristol area. But uh, that was TVA land. Wow. And the dam was built by TVA. You know about the Virginia Creeper Trail. Uh-huh. Now this sure. is, we're not talking about benefits to Tennessee, but people, Tennesseans benefit from this anyway. Well, I mean, it's Southwest Virginia too, so that's yeah. the. Well, the Virginia Creeper Trail wouldn't probably exist the way it exists if it weren't for TVA. You know, there's kind of two segments to it. It starts at the top of the mountain, goes to Damascus, and then from mm -hmm. Damascus on to Abingdon. The uh, part, the uh, National Forest Service, uh, when uh, when they abandoned the railroad, they wanted to create, and they did, mm -hmm. the from the top of the mountain to Damascus. But the far the Forest Service didn't have, you know, any jurisdiction between Damascus and Abingdon. And this is where the beauty of the TVA Act, back at the beginning of our interview, when I said broad authority can do mm -hmm. anything. TVA recreational planners worked with the Forest Service. TVA bought the rights or got the rights of the railroad between Damascus and Abingdon and transferred them back to the Forest Service. Wow. Maybe, or maybe it's Damascus and Abingdon. They're involved in the management of that trail somehow too. But uh, yeah, that uh, true story. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome. Uh, the Kingsport Greenbelt. You know about that? I'm not familiar with that. I'm not a big sport person, but I'm sure lots of the... Lots well, of the, the uh, Greenbelt uh, Trail, I think, I don't know, it's nine or ten miles long now. People can bike on it and run. And Oh, yeah, okay. I know what you're talking about, yeah. Uh, the conceptual plan for that was done for the city by TVA for uh, the city in 1985. Mm. And uh, it gradually was implemented by the city. But in 1997, TVA did the riverfront bank stabilization that helped the Greenway uh, at that point. Um, I, we, I talked about the convenience center system mm -hmm. for collecting garbage. Most, just about every county in Upper T East Tennessee has a convenience center system for garbage these days. Uh, I talked to a friend of mine that uh, knows or should know more recently, and uh, I didn't mention this earlier, but there are 95 counties in the state of Tennessee and 93 of them have convenience center wow. systems. That's, that's quite a bit, yeah. Another thing that TVA did up in your area uh, was non -points, working on non-point source pollution, water quality. Uh, especially on the North Fork and the Middle Fork of the Holston River, mm -hmm. where farmers, animal farmers with pigs and cattle, yep. cattle were getting in, uh, and animal waste was getting into those streams. It was very yeah, I remember that. Yeah, uh, well, TVA water quality people worked in conjunction with the state people to uh, help clean that up. They worked with the farmers. You know they created manure pits or different types of things yeah. to, to keep the animals out of the out of those creeks. But TVA did a lot of that non-point source pollution work in the 1980s and 1990s mm -hmm. in Tennessee. Um, there's the Duffield Tri-County Industrial Park in Virginia. Yeah. TVA de helped develop that, get it out of the floodplain. Um, in Clinchport and Big Stone Gap, um, they moved people, TVA, uh, I think it was Clinchport, there was a number of parts of Clinchport that were really affected by severe flooding. And uh, I think this was back in the 1970s. And uh, I wouldn't remember that one, thankfully. I've, I've <laughs> going go and get through all of it, but I was a little kid then, so okay. go ahead. Well, they asked <laughs> The, the uh, Clinchport or the uh, county authorities asked TVA to, to, they wanted to 
TVA to build a dam. Mm -hmm. And TVA decided that, no, we're not going to do that. That was too expensive, or there may, may have been other issues. They said the best thing we can do is relocate the people. So TVA actually relocated those people out of the floodplain. There were about 30 houses, I understand. Something similar was done at, at Big Stone Gap. But uh, reducing flood risk and impacts on people was, you know, still a kind of a issue with TVA to try. Well, that's amazing, though. I mean, those people probably didn't know what to do and didn't have the means to be able to get out of the area. So that's. Yeah. And well, they got uh, they were they were helped, you know, yeah. financially. I don't know yeah. exactly how much, but right. And I haven't been to Clinchport for a long time, but I think Clinchport is still there on one side of the river, but I think it's the other side, the, the uh, west side we're talking about. And I believe that they're thinking about developing some sort of a park or oh, green, wow. green area there now. Um, Coburn, Virginia, TVA did town lift all over the Tennessee and also all over the Tennessee Valley with small communities they brought in teams of engineers, planners, and uh, architects and helped towns spruce up their downtown. Oh, wow, that's wonderful. Nice, or, you know, walkways, bridges. And, yeah. so, and there was some sort of a stream channelization project in Coburn. And the downtown, there's, uh, there are bridges that connect one side of the stream with the other and brick walkways, you know, things like that. Right. It was done. And that was done in many places. Uh, around the Tennessee Valley. Um, the, um, one, and here's one other thing that uh, I didn't mention. TVA was involved in helping improve education in all sorts of ways. Education for uh, people that, uh, you know, for, to wanna get jobs in, in expanding industries in Tennessee. Uh, these would these projects would go on and then they you know or they move around and be done in different places. But there was some some uh, that dealt with adult literacy. Mm -hmm. There was one that dealt with improving teacher certification among teachers in West Tennessee. Uh, over the last, I mean, I'm talking about since 1960s, you know. Right. And uh, but in the 1980s. Uh, TVA was trying to build networks among educational institutions. In fact, your community college may have been part of this, and I don't know for sure, but there was a, an Upper East Tennessee Educational Cooperative. Oh, wow. Uh, put together by TVA, but it was it involved, uh, I know it involved East Tennessee State University, it involved Dobbins Bennett High School, Boone High School, Science Hill. Uh, That's a big wide group, yeah. Or smaller schools in the remote, more remote areas. And uh, the Greenville Center of Technology, I forget. Mm. And what they did was, now this is, this is ancient history here. <laughs> but this is before the internet. But this was really cutting edge stuff. They developed an interactive television network. Oh my, yeah. People in different schools could share information. Or that is amazing. If you were in a high school at Science Hill, you could listen to someone that was teaching a chemistry course at you know East Tennessee. Really? School. Wow, all that technology that far back. Yeah. And uh they needed the they did it via fi using fiber optics and they had to get the cooperation of in this case, I think it was the United Intermountain Telephone Company. Oh, wow. But they put these networks together, and I understand that they did all kinds of interesting stuff with that. But uh, they helped it at during the daytime. They used it primarily for sharing information among teachers, maybe students uh, that were at school. But in the evenings, uh, I think uh, uh, they used different centers. And this is where the community college may have come in. But uh, they used it for training adults for, uh, you know, vocational type training. Right. That's amazing. Training. Yeah. Anyway, I will stop with that, but I hope I've given you enough 
Two, you two. have been wonderful. I have, <laughs> I'm, as soon as we get off here, I'm going to have to start looking up all this stuff because I just go crazy with them. Oh. But it, it's been, you've told me so many things I didn't know. There's one I missed and I need to okay. tell you. It's, it's the junk car removal program. Oh, wow. Yes, do tell. Sometime in 1970, uh, TVA, and TVA did this by itself. They developed a method of removing all the abandoned cars from the Tennessee Valley landscape, primarily in you know East Tennessee in the yeah. mountains. And they they uh, developed a truck to be able to go get the the uh, body hawks, and and then they took them to a central location, and then distributed them to scrap metal dealers. That's nearby. wonderful. Nearby, and that was uh, done within a period of a couple of years, and. Uh, TVA got a National Keep America Beautiful Award for that. That well, yeah. I mean, even today there's still junk cars hiding in the woods here and there. So I yeah. can, and you know, that's great. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I believe that's about it. Well, thank you so much. Like I said, you have given me so much information. Um, you've given all of us a lot of information. Well, this is an important project. And, Absolutely. Uh, so much that TVA has done through the years, not, not a lot. I mean, not so much has been, like I said, they worked under the radar. They tried to be a catalyst and a change agent and help people or cities or schools or counties uh, do things that would solve their problems. But uh, in that vein, TVA never really went in and said, hey, we're big TVA. You need to do this, you know. Well, and see, that's usually where them along. That's where you get more, you know, that's what makes it so amazing. They weren't doing it. It doesn't seem to me like they wanted the publicity out of it. It was just like, you know, all these things under the radar, like you said, that's what makes it all the more better. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and the things that you've described, thinking back and going back and taking some of those things away, it's unimaginable how we would be as a state right yeah. now, you know, how it would have evolved without it, you know? And a lot of things worked like I saw it with those convenience centers and waste management. It worked just like uh, it must have worked back in the 30s with the farmers. Mm -hmm. I just did a couple of demonstrations of, you know, how to have a, a collection system that works. We worked with about five counties. We gave them a little money to get started, you know, mm -hmm. with them. But over a period of five years or so, the different county officials, they go to their meetings you know, start mm -hmm. sharing information and they must have been saying, hey, this thing really works, you know. Yeah, you know. no doubt. So That's now uh, a lot more counties have it, you know. That's yeah, it. yeah. I couldn't believe how many counties we have. I was just like 95. I had no clue Yeah. Uh, when you were talking about that. Well, there are about uh, a double that number of counties in the Tennessee River Valley. Yeah. I didn't say this, but I guess you probably know that the Tennessee uh, Valley really uh, touches or includes parts of seven states. Yeah, yep. The TVA works with all seven states in different ways. That's amazing. And the TVA power system grew to be so popular back in the 1940s and 50s that it kind of doubled the service area so that the area that TVA provides power is twice as big as the the watershed, and uh, in fact, That's Congress, just unreal. Congress had to pass an act in 1959 to tell they TVA calls it the fence to tell TVA to stop expanding, and so TVA cannot provide power beyond the limits of its existing service area. Oh wow! Because of that congressional act. That's crazy. Well, I mean, but if you just look at the power part of it, look at how many people's lives on a daily basis they, they affect. Yeah. I mean, it's just mind-boggling. Well, we just take electricity for granted these days. but We take everything for granted now. <laughs> I know every little thing, it's like, you know, but this right here, like I said, this is just, it's mind-boggling. Well, the, now, and did amazing you, organization. And have you kept up uh, with what's, you know, the current uh, situation is with regard to TVA and the state of Tennessee announced about a month ago they're going to develop how many hundreds of charging stations 
for electric yeah. vehicles. Yeah, yep, yeah, I saw that too. So they're they're still moving right along. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, it's never ending. It's, it's <laughs> amazing, amazing. But there are a lot of people that don't like TVA for different reasons. I must say, we've been talking about the impact of it, and I've been talking about some things I think are good things. But uh, you know, TVA, TVA's impact, it's, it's a perception people have. Uh, the perception people have of TVA varies depending upon what TVA did to your local community. Exactly, I would say Your so. family. And, yeah. and some, someone, you know, if, if my... If your grandfather's lost his farm because TVA put it underwater, they may have you may have a different uh, perspective than a business. Like people in Butler, they probably weren't a fan when they got you know they flooded Butler. Um, but I do know my father grew up on a farm in a place called Rome Mountain, and they had acres and acres right on the Doe River. Uh -huh. And I remember them talking about floods and all that and now everything just kind of I understand a lot more you know from just even listening to you so um but you know the people that got flooded that lost their town in Butler it's split I mean you've heard I've heard I've heard people because they have Butler days and they go up and show they have pieces of stuff from the old town and all that and I've heard people say, but look at what an amazing thing they did. I mean, you know, it was an inconvenience, but then you've got some people that are like, they ruined everything. You know, that's that's with anything you have. Right. Uh, but I've not heard much negativity even. I mean, that's more close to home for me other than the broad spectrum of it. Um, and people are just amazed to uh, see what has happened. And I know back... Um, I don't remember if it was the late 80s or the early 90s, they drained the lake down. Uh, and you could actually see parts of old Butler. Um, and there was cars down there and school buses and people were like, I actually saw where my grandpa used to live, you know, and it, it, <laughs> it was a big deal, you know? Yeah. Like, I guess you don't think of the lake being man-made. It's just always been there, you know, in our right. lifetime, you know? So... Yeah, I mean, it's pretty neat, but I've heard a lot more positive than I have negative. So that's, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, it's it's personal. If your family's industry got gone because of the TVA, then you're going to have the TVA, you know, so. Well, it's a, uh, it's certainly a interesting organization and uh, it uh, can operate really flexibly when it needs to and has a lot of authority. It's a big place. Yeah, evidently so. From but, what uh, things it's, they've done, its presence, I think, has brought uh, desired changes to Tennessee, and I think that it's worked with a lot of other people to uh, bring about those changes. And sounds to me like the overall well-being has been to the plus side. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, this has been great. It has been wonderful, and I think you, you have any other questions. Information. I don't think so. I think my mind's fried right now. I'm I'm still, <laughs> you know, I'm still building that dam in Matauga. So yeah, it's, <laughs> I thank you so much. It's been so informative. Um, and I've enjoyed talking to you and we appreciate the information. You're welcome.